key aspects of antennas, uh, materials, and and packaging for for 6G applications, uh, focusing maybe more on the on the sub terahertz range, uh, but there are also some some observations which are more uh, more more common for lower frequency uh, applications as well. So we'll be we'll be looking at at some uh, particular antenna types which can find uh, find use in in six G applications. Uh, then go through some details on suitable materials, uh, integration processing aspects, um, looking at those also from the antenna perspective, and. Uh, Towards the end, have a short glimpse on uh, uh, a number of key points when it comes to uh, measurements and and testing of these kind of high high frequency integrated systems. Um, like we've already seen in uh, most of the uh, most of the presentations, six uh, G in, in its various uh, forms is uh, pushing uh, the capabilities of uh, of wireless technologies forward, uh, increasing the uh, performance uh, for many of the, the key performance indicators uh, that you see uh, see listed in the in the figure, um, and uh, in order to to achieve these sort of uh, uh, gains uh, we we need to go go towards higher uh, high, higher frequencies in in pursuit of uh, of 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 more spectrum um at at the same time when we go uh, go towards the higher side of the, of the frequencies uh, this doesn't come without price so we need to consider some quite uh, important, even fundamental uh, technological aspects. Uh, for instance, um, how does the system architecture look like uh, in terms of uh, performance, integration, um, thermal issues, and so on? And uh, also, what are the possible uh, technologies that we can use? Uh, both for active devices in terms of the, of the semiconductor uh, technologies uh, and also for for some of the uh, of the passive designs as well and uh, the upper millimeter wave sub terahertz frequencies uh, are one area in which uh, these things can be uh, achieved. Um, for instance, at the 100 to 300 gigahertz uh, frequency range. Uh, when we shift uh, shift to that range, uh, we see a clear uh, increase uh, of path loss at the, as a function of uh, frequency. So, for instance, 300 gigahertz, uh, we are at about uh, 80 dBs per meter, which starts to be uh, a lot, and uh, and as a result, uh, we need something uh, to counter uh, this uh, this loss, and and that can be done uh, using uh, using more uh, directive links, higher gain antennas uh, to to compensate uh, for the extra extra path loss. Uh, the, the figure shows some examples that. Uh, but the arbitrarily chosen 4G, 5G, 6G frequencies with uh, typical or representative uh, gain values for the sake of uh, example, and, and and indeed, if uh, if we have good enough gain performance, then then we can really uh, really boost uh, boost the link performance. Uh, 
Um, when we think about uh, about the antennas that we can use, um, on, on the one hand, we know that uh, the uh, size uh, size of the antennas is uh, proportional uh, to to the wavelength, and and as the frequency increases, the wavelength goes down, and uh, the electrical size of the antennas uh, or, or the physical size corresponding to let's say half wave. Uh, size uh, re reduces. Um, on the other hand, we know that uh, the gain of an antenna uh, is proportional to the area of the aperture of, of, of said element. And uh, therefore, one approach that comes to mind uh, is to use uh, larger, uh, larger antennas. So let's say larger uh, reflectors or then uh, phased or other uh, other arrays which have ha have been uh, discussed uh, previously. Um, uh, one might think that is this uh, is this uh, a trivial solution, uh, or how then to maintain uh, the integrability uh, with, with with the rest of the uh, rest of the electronics, and uh, this is actually one key point which starts to be uh, a differentiating factor when we compare to uh, to 5g and uh, and other lower frequency free frequency systems and and, and that, that is that even though uh, the size of the antenna themselves uh, comes down um, the rest of the electronics amplifiers uh, mixers and so on uh, they don't shrink uh, at the same rate as the antennas do, uh, but rather uh, we have uh, we have a a, a crossover point uh, somewhere close to close to 100 gigahertz, uh, where the size uh, required for uh, for, for for the arrays uh, starts to actually be be dominated uh, by the electronics uh, rather than the uh, than the antennas uh, antennas themselves. Um, it, when thinking about uh, what the gain or or directivity properties. Uh, look like um, we have uh, have an illustration at, at at a couple of frequencies how uh, how when we're, when we're using uh, using a larger uh, antenna aperture uh, we get uh, get a boost uh, in 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 directivity so a more more focused beam uh, but at the same time uh, as the directivity goes up, uh, the pattern becomes more more pencil-like, and and the half power beam with uh, becomes substantially narrow. Um, when we're talking about um, very narrow beams, especially if we have those uh, on both sides of the link, uh, the transmitter and receiver, uh, this calls for a very accurate alignment in order to ensure that uh, uh, the beams are actually actually meeting uh, as well as some other effects like uh, uh, more sensitivity to uh, to windage and other effects if uh, if we have an outdoor uh, outdoor scenario where we are uh, applying our high frequency uh, system Then let's uh, have a look at some some antenna solutions uh, that could have the potential to to provide uh, the, the kind of performance that we are uh, we, we are looking for. Uh, one common technique uh, to to improve the gain is to use uh, lenses, uh, typically 
uh, dielectric lenses, uh, the material can vary a bit uh, depending on the application. Um, in this case, uh, the gain uh, that the lens produces depends uh, depends on the size, uh, the shape, uh, as well as on, on the dielectric properties of the material uh, that's being used. Um, and the, the practical values that typically uh, are are used could be in the range of say twenty to thirty dBi. Um, of course, a, a lens antennas are nothing uh, especially uh, new when it comes to comes to six G. Uh, they have been studied uh, since the. Uh, late 19th century in general, uh, but now with, with 6G and the move towards uh, sub terahertz frequencies, we start to be uh, in a range where the uh, physical size of the lens starts to approach uh, more comfortable form factors for for the rest of the uh, rest of the electronics. As for instance, uh, a 10 millimeter lens at 300 gigahertz, uh, its aperture can provide the same gain as a uh, 10 centimeter lens at uh, at 30 gigahertz. And uh, one of those is uh, obviously easier to integrate for uh, for many practical scenarios uh, than the other. Uh, in the sub terahertz context, uh, where Typically, looking at so-called integrated lens antennas, uh, where the performance depends on the properties of both the lens, uh, as well as an on-chip antenna that's used to uh, illuminate the lens in in transmission or to pick up uh, the signals received by the lens uh, in the reverse scenario. Uh, in, in, the, in these cases, uh, what makes uh, the lenses attractive is that uh, they typically can uh, use the lens aperture quite well, uh, can have uh, a fairly stable uh, radiation pattern uh, over a wide range of frequencies, uh, and can be considered uh, a somewhat cost-effective solution as well. Uh, one, one slight uh, limitation or, or benefit, depending a bit on the application, uh, is that uh, lens antennas tend to be uh, mostly uh, fixed beam solutions where the scan range uh, or, or, the, or the steerability uh, usually reduces as the gain of the lens uh, lens goes goes up. So we have this inverse uh, proportion uh, to to these parameters. Um, to compensate for, for the fixed beam, uh, we, we use multiple feeds uh, to switch between uh, individual uh, beam directions. Uh, or then have more complex uh, arrays and combine the different feeds uh, together uh, to cover some of the uh, some, some of the gaps uh, between uh, between the discrete beams uh, that that can be uh, can be formed. Here are some so, some examples um, of uh, integrated lens lens antennas using uh, using a silicon uh, a silicon lens uh, together with some so, some details uh, of the of the on chip antenna that's used. Uh, the left example is is from uh, from our group. Uh, 
where we have uh, have the chip uh, connected to uh, to a power detector or uh, or an LNA boosted power detector for improved sensibility and sensitivity and uh, and, and range and uh, uh, the other example is from uh, uh, from Professor Piper's group uh, using a more uh, more complex RF system uh, and also a slightly different approach uh, when it comes to comes to the heat management of of, of such a such a system and uh, we'll get back uh, to to those in a moment. Um, when it comes to to beam steering, beam switching, um, the left left example uh, is is the one that I previously described, uh, where we have n different uh, antennas uh, and transceiver chains uh, that can produce uh, produce n uh, n beams in different directions uh, when we have uh, ha have a homogeneous Lens material such as the silicon uh, lens in in the previous examples. Uh, there are also approaches where by by using uh, inhomogeneous lenses uh, with with materials that have have a specific uh, uh, material properties in, in the radial direction, uh, such as the Luneberg lens or or the Maxwell. Uh, fisheye lens. Uh, here, depending on on which part uh, of, of the lens lens we are uh, we are illuminating it, uh, then we get you know, get the foc focusing properties uh, at the at the opposite side coming from uh, the radially uh, anisotropic uh, permittivity or, or refract refractive index. Uh, index profile. Uh, these inhomogeneous lenses can take different uh, different shapes, uh, be multi-shell lenses combining different materials, or having a gradient uh, index profile, which uh, can be be beneficial in in getting more uh, more planar lenses. Um, but one important point to note here is that uh, re realizing this kind of uh, very precise uh, refractive index profile uh, in practice uh, can can be quite quite challenging or or require careful consider consideration uh, of what kind of materials uh, uh, can be used uh, used for these purposes. Uh, there is also uh, also a small workaround uh, to to obtain a beam steering capability, and and that is uh, to have uh, have your lens and and on chip antenna, and uh, just move the lens with respect to the feed. Um, this is what we've uh, we've recently tested, and. Uh, with with the uh, adjustment screws uh, that you see in the in the leftmost picture, uh, we were able to to control uh, the position of the lens with respect to the feed, and uh, in, in this case, uh, do uh, a beam steering uh, across an angular range of about plus minus thirty degrees uh, in, in in the azimuth plane. Uh, if uh, if we accept uh, uh, 3db scan loss uh, for, for for the lens for performance um, another thing worth noting is that uh, uh, on this uh, chip uh, we had two separate antennas connected to uh, the two different uh, ic chains and uh, when when we were measuring both of those uh, antennas by by sweeping uh, the lens uh, across the surface uh, we 
were able to obtain uh, a spacing between the two two peaks uh, that the antennas generated, uh, which is very uh, very very close to the actual physical separation uh, of of the two antennas uh, on the chip, uh, roughly roughly 500 microns. Uh, if we then think about uh, solutions with uh, uh, a better beam steering capability, uh, phase arrays uh, are one uh, one good candidate uh, for for these purposes. Um, uh, but uh, one thing to note is that uh, as we are going deeper into the subterhertz uh, domain, uh, we we may end up uh, in a situation where uh, suitable uh, technologies to provide uh, provide the beam tuning may, may be more limited uh, than than at some 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 lower frequencies. Uh, depending on how we're feeding and driving this array, it's uh, it's even possible to to get multiple beams simultaneously to different directions uh, out of the system. But uh, this comes uh, at the expense of uh, requiring a more more complex and expensive uh, front end electronics to to drive the system. Uh, in the array, uh, as uh, you well know from from basic uh, antenna theory uh, the gain uh, is dependent on the on the number of elements um, here is uh, an example looking at uh, at just the the array factor uh, coming from uh, from from the size size of array that we're using so not considering uh, what what the gain of the individual elements is um, and uh, we can see that if, if we, for instance, want uh, want a 30, 30, 30 dBi uh, worth of directivity, uh, then that calls for about 1,000 elements, um, and, and at 300 gigahertz, uh, we could uh, could do that with about a, a 10 millimeter uh, 10 millimeter lens. So the size, cost, complexity. Uh, are are important factors uh, to to consider here for for the overall uh, fe feasibility of, of of implementation, uh, as well as the fact that uh, the more elements, uh, more RF chains uh, present in the system, uh, the, the higher are, uh, are, are is the power consumption, uh, and at the same time uh, more. Emphasis is needed on the, on a good uh, good temperature control uh, and heat management. Um, uh, sl with slightly uh, different kind of arrays, uh, another option is the so-called reflect array, uh, which uh, is a, a hybrid antenna of sorts, uh, where it shares the spatial illumination uh, that uh, reflector antennas. Use and and the uh, beam collimation and, and phase synthesis properties of, of the previous uh, previous phase arrays. Um, in, in this case, if we have our uh, our transmitted uh, signal, then the different elements that we have in the array uh, they provide a reflection with uh, a specific uh, a specific phase shift. Uh, that is uh, uh, changing between uh, between different elements uh, within within the array, uh, and, and this then uh, collimates uh, or through reflection provides a collimated beam to uh, to a desired direction uh, and and with uh, with a particular beam shape uh, for for that particular application. Um, depending on how how we implement uh, this phase shift, whether it's a, a fully passive passive design or having some active uh, phase tuning reconfigurability, uh, both of those 
types of reflector rays are possible, and uh, especially if we have uh, reconfigurability, uh, then then these are sharing uh, sharing quite uh, quite some relation to uh, so-called reflective intelligence surfaces or RIS, which is also a hot topic nowadays in uh, in the in the 6G community. Uh, a variant on, on the previous is the, the so-called uh, transmit array, which, uh, as the name suggests, uh, the uh, array structure is uh, is illuminated uh, by a source, and and instead of uh, reflecting it back from the from the from the surface, uh, the array provides uh, provides a transmitted a wave front uh, where where the spherical waves coming from uh, from the source antenna uh, are converted into a, uh, into a planar uh, wave front. Um, with transmit arrays, if we want to do uh, do beam steering, uh, typically we need to have uh, multi-layered structures, multi-layered transmit arrays, uh, or so-called uh, meta lenses, uh, in which uh, the size of the individual elements uh, is affecting the phase. Um, and yet in order to do uh, phase compensation for for steering the beam to to different directions, uh, that's something which uh, which requires uh, the use of uh, of the multiple layers. Uh, one one category, which uh, depending a bit on the on the application, uh, may or may not be a good choice uh, for subterrahertz six G is uh, is the so called leaky wave antennas uh, that are a subset of more general uh, traveling wave antennas uh, that include uh, waveguide slot antennas, helical antennas, dielectric rods, and so on. Um, in, in, in this case, uh, we have a structure uh, that, that, that is fed and, and, and which has some capability of, of, of leaking, leaking the fields and the signals uh, out from the, uh, from the structure. Uh, it, it could be an array of, uh, of slots that's made to the waveguide uh, where the dimensions, spacing and so on. Um, affect uh, affect the uh, ra radiation directions uh, and other properties of the of the pattern that is being being produced. Um, this kind of leaking mechanism uh, enables using relatively simple structures to to control uh, the, the uh, control the feeding. Um, but uh, one noticeable difference compared to to, to many of the other uh, other examples that we went through is that uh, the direction of the beam uh, is also steering uh, ste steering as a function of, uh, of of frequency. So with different uh, different frequencies, we get uh, get patterns to to different directions coming from. Uh, from, from the fundamental uh, operating mode of, of this antenna. Uh, so some cases may uh, may benefit from this, uh, but uh, that may may not always be uh, the case. Uh, some some general observations can be made based on uh, based on these uh, previous uh, uh, points. And uh, one is that uh, uh, to achieve a proper communication distance, uh, we need to have a high enough gain uh, from, from the antennas. And uh, since this makes the, the beams of the antennas uh, narrow, uh, some form of reconfigur reconfigurability uh, is a desired, desired property. Uh, this can be either beam steering, uh, 
switching between frequencies or, or both um, to to account for facts such as uh, tracking uh, moving users uh, in case of uh, more mobile applications, or then if there are some changes happening uh, in, in the propagation environment, for instance, in, in indoors, uh, we can take into account uh, those sort of aspects as well. Um, then, if if we think about uh, about the overall uh, antenna gain uh, gain budget that we have at uh, at the RX and and, and TX sides, uh, uh, there there can be uh, trade offs happening between uh, between the the gain and and support of of mobility. Um, uh, that that may require using designs that take take features from uh, different types of antennas that support uh, support a high gain. Um, if we have uh, a scenario where uh, where we have, for instance, uh, at the receiver uh, a much uh, much lower gain. Uh, than at the transmitter, this may uh, may result in a in a situation where uh, the the beam width at both ends of the link uh, can be substantially different, which then makes the uh, makes more, uh, more more challenges for 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 the alignment and overall optimization of the link uh, link performance. Uh, moving gears a bit towards the, the material side, um, generally uh, with subterrahertz antennas, we can divide uh, the possible materials in, in three categories, uh, metallic antennas, horns and so on, uh, dielectric antennas, lenses, dielectric resonator antennas, um, and then some more, uh, more exotic and experimental materials using, for instance, the carbon nanotubes, metamaterials, various plasmonic solutions, and so on. Uh, they all have, have their individual uh, benefits, uh, benefits and drawbacks. Uh, metallic designs, the geometry can be, uh, can be simple, uh, relatively cheap to fabricate, uh, with increasing tolerances on, from, for manufacturing. Uh, which can can start to be a bit a bit of a problem, uh, or then how to how to integrate uh, these kind of uh, antennas with with planar circuits. Uh, lenses and other dielectrics are are more more suitable for for the integration, but they start to suffer from uh, from uh, substrate modes uh, and the fact that part uh, of the radiation. Or, or the signals get trapped uh, in, in the substrate itself and not uh, not transmitted, which uh, which decreases the overall uh, overall efficiency. Uh, uh, the new uh, new materials column, it's a bit more bit a bit of a uh, bit of a mystery box, if you will. Uh, it's something that uh, uh, combines aspects from both. Uh, both uh, antenna design uh, as well as on materials research, uh, developing new materials, uh, which uh, in some cases can can provide breakthroughs in terms of the performance. But uh, because because of the new uh, new uh, recent developments, uh, these might might be suffering from. Uh, from a limited technological maturity, which uh, uh, which can can be a problem, especially in uh, in large scale uh, applications and and integration. Um, when we think about what uh, what happens with the antennas uh, and the rest of the RF uh, system. Uh, 
uh, then we get to the world of uh, uh, of, of materials processing and, and and packaging and their impact on performance. Um, for for different uh, different systems, uh, different frequencies, different applications, uh, different technologies can be used uh, used to combine uh, and, and integrate the antennas and high seas into a uh, more more complete system. Uh, Sometimes using uh, so-called heterogeneous integration, which uh, which Mikko mentioned about previously. Uh, for for the electrical performance, uh, key factors uh, of, of of materials are the dielectric constant and the and loss tangent, um, where uh, the applications at the high frequencies prefer uh, using materials with uh, as low losses as possible. Uh, and also try to minimize uh, the losses uh, coming from uh, from transmission lines, various kind of interconnects, uh, bumps, wires, and so on in, in the system, because we are in a range where uh, where every every dB counts essentially. Um, if we're combining uh, combining from uh, from chips to carriers, then we are in a range where Bumps are preferred over bond wires, as uh, these have uh, smaller parasitic effects, uh, as well as a good uh, good reproducibility. Um, the previous low losses and the fact that uh, as the frequency goes up, the need to have uh, a very precise alignment between different parts uh, that's generally Increasing the requirements uh, and the complexity uh, for for the fabrication technologies and processes processes mm. that can be used, um, both in terms of uh, of the form factor uh, that uh, that the different uh, different techniques uh, or integration approaches uh, can support, uh, and also what comes to to the various uh, materials, uh, interconnects compatibility with uh, with uh, different frequencies and so on, uh, such as uh, antennas on PCB, uh, antenna in package, uh, antenna on chip. Uh, they all uh, all have their, uh, their their respective uh, respective benefits, um, but as we are now talking about uh, something more on the higher higher end of frequency, uh, AIP and AOC, they start to be uh, the more more, more relevant uh, technologies to use. Um, if, if thinking about the integration uh, in terms of uh, the vertical stacking using the third dimension. Uh, more efficiently, uh, that uh, can enable uh, to reduce the distance between between different antennas, interconnects, keep a compact uh, footprint, um, while requiring uh, some careful consideration about uh, about the antenna and front end architectures that can be used, uh, the effect of substrate modes, and so on. Um, here, here, here are some. Some some examples uh, of uh, of both the broadside uh, and end fire type radiating arrays uh, with with or without uh, lenses that can can benefit from from this sort of uh, added uh, inter integration. Um, when we're looking at especially the transmitter side, uh, aspects such as uh, thermal conductivity, uh, thermal mechanical stress, uh, they start to be uh, be important for the performance and the reliability, as uh, we have a, a high dissipated power uh, and, and also high high power densities with lots of uh, active components in a relatively small area, and uh, this calls for approaches to get 
uh, get the signal in uh, through the stack, uh, as well as getting getting then the heat uh, heat out out from the system uh, using various kind of uh, interconnects, uh, heat spreaders, active cooling in some cases, uh, depending on the on the application. Uh, if we think about lenses uh, and IC chips, uh, there are different uh, different approaches uh, that can be used to to combine uh, combine, the, combine the lens uh, lens and the chip, uh, where uh, a good connection or a smooth interface between uh, between the lens and the chip is generally uh, desired uh, to reduce the effect of uh, reflections uh, and, and overall a better uh, transmission from from our chip uh, to to the lens side, um, the material of the lens, as well as the layout of the of the chip, the the rest of the uh, of the materials around it, uh, they're they're also something that play play a role in the in the thermal properties, and uh, this example shows that uh, if we have uh, a 300 gigahertz uh, LNA uh, that is active uh, behind the lens. Uh, then the fact that we have uh, have a lens present uh, that already drops the peak uh, temperature by about uh, 10 degrees, uh, which is which is already a substantial amount. Uh, the last point to to look at is. Uh, uh, is a bit on the, on the measurement uh, measurement and testing side. Uh, so when we have a system which is more uh, more and more integrated, uh, that typically means that we have fewer fewer points uh, in the chain uh, where we can uh, sort of access uh, access or or probe uh, that structure. Um, in in uh, terms of interfacing our system with with the measurement equipment. Uh, standardized coax connectors; those go up to about up to 110 gigahertz, and, and after that, we need to use uh, various waveguide-based uh, based connect connections or interfaces, uh, which can be uh, can be a challenge if uh, if we are using uh, DUTs that are not uh, based on uh, based on waveguide technology. Uh, or then how how to connect uh, our DUT uh, to a PCB for for doing probing and and other conductive uh, measurements. Uh, when when doing things over the air, that has its uh, its direct benefits, uh, but doesn't come fully without limitations either. Uh, if we have a large enough uh, antenna and a high enough frequency, uh, if we want to do measurements uh, in the far field, we might end up in a situation where uh, the far field distance uh, gets uh, impractically large, especially if doing things uh, indoors, uh, in, in lab environments. Uh, for these cases, uh, it's possible to use uh, the, the near field scanners uh, to uh, to collect uh, the near field data from the antenna, which can then be processed uh, to provide the corresponding far field patterns, or techniques such as uh, compact antenna ranges, holograms, uh, to artificially create uh, plane wave far field conditions at a distance much closer than uh, than what would be coming from the uh, from the physics for 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 this uh, kind of system or, or antenna. Um, so uh, here are some uh, some some key uh, key takeaways from uh, from this uh, presentation. Uh, the first point is that uh, what kind of uh, antenna design is uh, is suitable uh, for a particular application. Uh, that's something which very heavily depends on what kind of uh, performance metrics uh, are to be used for the system and and how. Uh, how, how is being steered uh, 
that were supposed to be uh, taken into account. Uh, when going for high frequencies, small sizes, uh, high performance uh, systems, uh, the role of of the materials that we use, how how these are how the system is packaged, uh, that has uh, has an ever increasing role uh, when it comes to the system performance, the architectures, and so on. Um, for, for for the antenna designers, uh, whether we like it or not, uh, in these kind of uh, sub terahertz systems with antennas and ICs, the antennas cannot be considered anymore uh, to be to be standalone components uh, that can be designed at will uh, with limited attention paid uh, paid to the ICs or the other system level aspects. And uh, therefore, for, for the antennas and ICs, uh, looking at, uh, at uh, 6G and uh, the next uh, following integer multiples of G of your choice, the way is either you do co-design or you do no design. And with that, I would like to thank you. Th thank you for your attention. And since it's still Star Wars Day at uh, some, some parts of the world, may the fourth be with you. Thank you, Kimo. Uh, that was really a uh, great talk. Indeed, uh, we should call antenna plus IC maybe antique, not antenna and IC. So I 